watching Mark Sphere. On today's vlog, we would be discussing episode 48 of Volta's 5 Legacy. Kaya naman, samahan po ninyo ako. For today's hashtag, it is Gamera. Ang pagsugod ng Beast Fighter na si Gamera. Kaya naman, tutukan ninyo kung anong nangyari dito sa episode na ito. Well, we're going to have a speed run again kasi marami tayo i-discuss for today's video. Kaya naman, simulan na natin sa kung anong nangyari sa episode nito. The episode started with Gamera devastating the city and the Volta's team responded. Gamera is very tough that no armaments was able to damage it. Steve noticed that Little John is not around and Steve went back to Camp Big Falcon to look for him. Mark took over as the leader for today's mission to destroy the Beast Fighter. Zardos noticed that there are only four Volt machines in the air and asked Android Ned. The Android responded that no wonder that the Volt machine he planted with an explosive has not moved yet from the Camp Big Falcon. The Volt frigate is known now to be in danger. Then afterwards, Zardos decided to withdraw Gamera back to base and send instead Bozanian saucers since the Volta's robot is not formed and he cannot kill the Volta's team in one sweep. Well, ganun talaga katuso si Prince Zardos. Gusto niyang matapos kagad ang kanyang mga problema. The remaining Volta's team members, Jamie and Big Bird, being led by Mark is engaging the Beast Fighter Gamera. It was a tough fight at first leading to Jamie's Volt Lander being damaged and lost in battle. Mark and Big Bird were able to kill the Beast Fighter as suggested by Jamie to hit in front after firing its chest cannon. As Gamera is about to withdraw from battle, good thing that Mark forces attack together with Big Bird and the Beast Fighter exploded as the missiles hit the weakest part, the exposed part of his chest with its depowered cannon. After the Beast Fighter battle, Mark was so worried on Jamie and rushly flew around to look. Good thing is that Jamie is safe and was able to reunite with the other two. More Bozanian saucers engage after the Beast Fighter is defeated and they fought against them. Steve is now back at the base and went straight to Little John's room. Steve saw Octo One and he tried to put back the power source. Octo One is then again alive and explained and showed to Steve what really happened on room 609. That's Ned's room. Steve realized that Little John is in danger in the hands of the android and looked for his little brother. Outside the Camp Big Falcon on the restricted area, the android is seen walking around and was found by Little John. The android forced Little John to go back to his Volt Frigate to form Voltus 5. Little John refused as he wants to help him as he is being held wanted by the Camp Big Falcon's security. Little John realized that the android is indeed his fake dad as he noticed that the individual hurting him and forcing him to go back. Little John ran away before he was killed using his invisibility cloaking device. Ned looked for him until finally he was able to get Little John almost attempting behind him. Little John is powerless and good thing that Steve came in and stopped him. Little John is free and a duel between the android and Steve have started. Steve was able to defeat him using his portable blade as he destroyed the knuckle blade of the android. On the android's last resort, he showed a switch saying that he will detonate the bomb inside on one of the vault machines. Little John then realized that his vault frigate is bombed and now knows the reason why he is forceful on piloting back the aircraft. Steve dared for the android to detonate it within 3 seconds, but due to Steve's misdirection, Mark was able to disarm him as the detonator dropped on the floor. The android tried to pick it up but was disarmed on the other arm by the shuriken of Jamie. Steve finished him off with his portable blade and the android has laid on the ground lifeless bearing a scar on face, exposing him as a robot in the appearance of Ned Armstrong. The episode ended as Little John apologized to his brothers for not believing in them, and he requested to see Professor Smith's body in the Camp Big Falcon. Dumako naman tayo sa mga important points ng episode na to. Grabe guys, talagang siksikliglig ang episode na to. Maraming naganap at marami rin tayong ma-appreciate para sa episode na to. Let's go with number 1, CGI Battles of the Volt Machines and Gamera. The pacing is top notch at balik talaga sa tokusatsu feels ang laban at ang ganda ng mga shots guys. 
Gamera being held, Gamera being unique to Voltus 5 Legacy Universe is a welcome addition as he is a big turtle with the looks of Gamenza but with the fire-breathing ability of Garuman. I wonder why Toei approve of this one as Gamera is in the Monsterverse. They also copied the ability of Gamera on, on Chest Cannon. Well, I really like the scene. Talagang maganda yung pagkakagawan ng CGI. Napaka-smooth at talagang napaka-astig, guys. Lalo na nung pinasabog ng dalawang Volt Machines, si Gamera. But I really hope that we get an answer on this super cool change on Gamenza. Or rather, on Volta 5 Legacy is Gamera. Ano pa? Ano pa ba ma-appreciate ko dito? The fight sequence where they are. We got a full city battle. Talagang may kita mo talaga yung, alam mo yung yung chase scene, yung habulan, yung nahirapan yung mga volt machines, yung paglipad along the city scrapers. Grabe guys, napaka-action pa. Talagang breathtaking siya para sa akin. And of course, this is very fresh on Philippine television. Let's go with number 2. Steve and Octo One's Dynamics Napaka smooth ng conversation and interaction na akala mo totoo si Octo One Let's not forget the voice actor Michael V Grabe ang galing how I wish that we have more of this kind of interaction Lalong lalo na napaka smooth ng CJ effects and practical effects At ito pa, with this one, perfect yung interaction At talaga guys, grabe yung tokusatsu feels nga If you're really watching some of the Super Sentai shows wherein they try to blend the real characters with robots or animals. Talagang dito mas smooth talaga yung pagkakagawa nila. And of course, the tokusatsu feels that we want na may mecha robot pet or sidekick na hindi lang palamuti kundi finally may silbi. Look at him having scanners, recorder, access to CCTV. What more? I don't know. Puma upgrade pa si Octo One pero excited ako doon. At ito pa, napansin ko pa ang relationship between Steve and Octo One is very much different from the anime. Sa anime kasi talagang at first talaga ayaw talaga ni Steve si Octo One. And of course napilitan na lang siya magustuhan si Octo One because they view the parts of Octo One to repair the damaged Vault Lander. But here, on the live action, eh talaga nag nagkaroon ng magandang relationship si Steve and Octo One. And of course, lalong-lalo na sumusunod si Octo One sa command ni Steve. And he really knows who is the highest among them. Yung hierarchy ba? na ang kanilang mga possession. May side note nga pala tayo. Akala ko kahapon is masisira yung Volt Lander ni Jamie at kukumpunahin ni Little John. But it was taken differently dahil hindi nga naman umalis ni Little John sa Camping Falcon. Which is good thing kundi sabog ang Voltus Robot. Let's go with number 3. Mark has been given the spotlight. Sobra siyang gigil sa pagtalo sa Beast Fighter and good thing na niwala siya sa sinabi ni Jamie to attack the chest part which is the weakest rather than the hide or the shell of the mirror. Tapos bumulusok pa baba ang Volt Lander at galit si Mark. And ito na nga, nakasurvive naman si Jamie, walang problema doon. At talagang may kita mo yung, alam mo yun yung galit talaga ni me. Mark and kasi nga nawala na rin si Professor Smith. So, yung pag-aalala niya to the highest level, level talaga at syempre, yun naman talaga yung inaalala rin ni Big Bird because he might be crashing his Volt Machine while rushing around flying para hanapin si Jamie, di ba? At ito pa, napaka-sweet rin ng kanyang linya na hindi niya kayang mawala si Jamie after Professor Smith died, di ba? Yung line na, Jamie, we just lost Dr. Smith. Wag naman pati ikaw. Saktong-sakto yung acting niya doon. Ah, well, buka ka siguro sa iba kasi parang they need more nuances regarding that one. But for me, I'm satisfied with that one. Go, go, go tayo kay Mark. Diba? Kapangalan ko pa. <laughs> Let's go with number four. The team fight dynamics of Steve, Jamie, and Mark. Siyempre, itong tatlo nating nasa tatsulo. Well, Wala ang bag si Big Bird dito guys ha Kasi close combat specialist siya But damn, yung latigo ni Mark And the shuriken of Jamie Finally nakita na naman natin ulit ito and talagang yung, sabi ko sa inyo, paulit-ulit, yung tokusatsu feels, yun yung talaga yung may kita mo sa episode na to, na, na may labanan talaga, man-to-man -man combat, ba? And, look at how Steve did his battle with the android. Grabe, nang iinis pa talaga siya sa android. And, I really like that part, kasi nga naman, kalkulado na niya ang mangyayari, ba? Let's go with number 5, Invisibility Cloaking Device. 
It's good that we get to see little John being able to take care of himself but foolish enough to go behind the android. Take note that he has footprints and recognizable footsteps on sand. Kaya madali siyang mahuli. What more if my sonar itong android making him know even though little John is behind him. Like what the heck is little John doing there ba? Diba? Instead of running away. Grabe. Crazy kid of not picking an enemy of his own size. Ewan ko ba't ito kay Little John? Pag di nalang tumakbo ng tumakbo at pumunta nalang sa loob ng Camp Big Falcon para humingi ng tulong. Crazy child, ewan ko lang kung bakit. <laughs> Pero siguro sa inis na rin niya, sa emotions na rin niya, na naloko siya ng peke, tatay niya, diba? Let's go with number 7. A new arc is coming, the coming of Dr. Hook. An exciting story would unfold for his arrival and now, looking at things that happened on Camp Big Falcon, being infiltrated thrice by Judy, by Manuel, and the android Ned. That's enough reason for Dr. Hook to be stricter and this puts logic on the anime of why he acts like that on the live action. Nice take yun. And a good amount of drama for the team for having loose treatment and training on the Camp Big Falcon. Kaya maghanda-handa ang Voltus team. Yun ang dapat nating abangan guys. At syempre, sino ang unang-unang maiinis dito? Diba? It's Mark. At may kita natin, hopefully parang gusto kong hundred na, na kahit pa paano, minsan ma masapak din minsan si Mark because of Ayun na nga, siguro pumutok na siya doon sa bagay na yon And siyempre sinasabi na tahimik lang si Mark But this time is talagang hirap siya magtimpe kay Dr. Hook Hopefully makita natin yon guys I don't know, I don't want to spoil you with that one Pero nasabi ko na rin lang naman diba? Ewan ko, gusto ko lang explain ulit yung number 9 Gamera's Creative Changes As you all know, Gamera is known also in the monster verse of the same species and same skill set as what we have on Volus 5 Legacy. I know Toei approve of this one, but I hope that it does not infringe on what we have on the monster verse. This is a small issue that we don't need to delve further, but it poses some concerns. Yun lang naman, concern lang naman ako kaya nabanggit ko lang naman din ito. They could have just put Gamenza and not renaming it as Gamera. Even the chest cannon is the same skill. Volta's 5 Legacy's version though, eh, impressed pa rin naman ako guys. The design, the animation, it's there. Top notch talaga yung pagkakagawa ng Riot. And I'm upvoting for what they did with this Pompagong, di ba? Wearing this one, di ba? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I hope Riot explains its decision to do this. Even though it's approved by Toei. Let's go with number 10, yung pinaka-importante guys. The death of Professor Smith posed an emotional damage on Volta's team. Same as the death of Mary Ann. Talagang malaki talagang epekto nito guys. But the Bozanian's Beast Fighter's end is also the greatest attack on morale on Bozan's technology and advancements. Yun lang talaga yung nakikita ko dito guys na malaking implication. Yung difference nilang dalawa guys, yung effect ng bawat kamatayan or pagkasira sa bawat kampo. Damn, truly a disaster with deeper meaning for each one of them. Grabe no guys, talagang kahit dito talaga eh may kita mo na meron ka talagang matututunan from each one of them from different camps kahit makaaway sila. Ito guys, ito lang masasabi ko. Overall, super ganda ng episode. Best among the rest as of yet shown on the series. Walang tapo na ito ang masasabi mo na closer to the Tokusatsu series, yung mga Super Sentai's or yung Metal Hero series ng Japan. And I really hope that they keep this one up. Talagang, I mean, tuloy-tuloy na to guys. Hopefully, maging fast-paced na at maraming mga mangyari pa sa bawat episodes. Marami tayong malalaman, madidiscover, matututunan, and we would be exploring more of the stories from the anime na i-adapt nila. Either they combine, they put it in a non-chronological order. Okay lang sa akin yun. Basta makita natin dito sa live action. But then again, kung wala, okay lang din naman. Basta, pinakamahalaga, maganda ang tagbe. And of course, smooth lang siyang panoorin at super enjoyable siya, diba? Again guys, maraming 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 salamat po sa inyong panonood until the end of this video. I really hope to see you on the next one. Hanggang sa muli, paalam!